First Samuel chapter three. Woe with Eli. And the child Samuel ministered unto the Lord before Eli. So he's doing the work of the Lord. And the word of the Lord was precious in those days. There was no open vision. The priests are wicked and vile. We saw that there was adultery at the door of the tabernacle. They're going in, grabbing the, the sacrifices before it was even cooked. And it came to pass at the time when Eli was laid down in his place. Man, we find Eli sitting. We find him laying down. We never find him doing anything like he's supposed to be doing. And his eyes began to wax dim. He's getting old. And he could not see. And er, that means before, the lamp of God went out in the temple of the Lord, where the ark of God was. That lamp was supposed to be burning all the time. They were to go in there and trim the wicks, fill the oil, keep it going. But... I thought that E-R-E -E was like error, like... Now, the definition is before, as I looked it up. Now, I don't know why it says be, would be, and before the lamp went out in the temple of the Lord, where the ark of God was, and then it says, and Samuel was laid down. That and doesn't make sense to me. Now, I'm not saying it's wrong. I'm the misunderstanding. But we do know that that lamp that was supposed to be burning goes out. The oil runs out. And you get, a, you get a parable of Jesus of five virgins where their oil went out and the Lord came. The oil goes out. And guess who shows up? God. And he shows up to Samuel. I wonder how they missed that story. And Samuel was laid down to sleep. So everybody's going to sleep now. Night, night time. Then the Lord called Samuel, and he said, answer, here am I. Now let's look, look at Acts 12, 22. Acts 12, 22. And this is a, this is a heathen death and Herod. Acts 12, 22, and the people gave a shout, saying, It's the voice of a God and not of man. And he received that. Immediately the angel of the Lord smote him because he gave not the God the glory. He was eating of worms and gave up the ghosts. Well, here we're going to hear the God. But Samuel is going to run to a man. Because he doesn't know who God is. He's a young child. And the Lord called Samuel, and he answered, Here I am. So he gives a loud, Here I am, and reached out to Eli at once. And he ran unto Eli and said, here, I, here am I. For thou callest me. And he said, I called not. That's Eli. Lie down again. And he went and lay down. Now, you got to ask yourself, at the call of, G, of God, excuse me, to Samuel, Samuel's in the middle of the sleep, and the first thing he does, he doesn't say, oh, God, what do you want? He runs to Eli. Does God's voice sound like Eli? And we don't know what Eli sounded like, but the first thing... If it was another voice, Samuel would be like, wake up, well, who was that? I don't I don't recognize that voice. He says, here I am, and he runs off to Eli. And not just once. In verse 6, the Lord called yet again. Samuel. Samuel rose and went to Eli and said, here am I, for thou didst call me. He answered, I called not, my son. Lie down again. And how old is Samuel? And what did Eli teach him? But the, the word of God is precious. There, there's no vision. 
Eli has sons that are not doing right. The, the candle is going out. Eli is not doing his job. Now Samuel did not yet know the Lord. Neither was the word of the Lord yet revealed unto him. That should have been by Eli. Eli is not teaching the children. He hasn't taught his children and he's not teaching Samuel. So Eli is in the wrong. Hannah has left her son to be with the Lord, to serve the Lord. Eli is in charge of that temple, and his own sons are wicked, and he's raising Samuel the same way. And the Lord called Samuel again the third time. And he arose and went to Eli and said, Here am I, for thou didst call me. And he never, this voice sounds different. And finally, Eli preserved that the Lord had called the child. Oh, it only took you three times to realize, Eli, that maybe God's speaking? Took you that long? The child bother you by waking you up? Therefore Eli said unto Samuel, Go, lie down. And it shall be, if he call thee, that thou shalt say, Speak, Lord, for thy servant hear it. So Samuel went and lay down in his place. And the Lord came and stood and called as at other times, Samuel, Samuel. Then, it, then, yeah, then Samuel answers and says, Speak, for thy, he didn't put the Lord in there. Eli says, Speak, Lord. <coughs> Samuel says, Speak, for thy servant hear it. Uh -oh. Forgot the Lord. And yet Samuel doesn't know who the Lord is, has any idea who he is. So he can't call the Lord Lord if he doesn't know who he is. Lord means you are my master. And Samuel is in absence of who God is. There are Christians today that say the Lord Jesus Christ, and they have no idea who Jesus is. They have no idea what Jesus wants. And they lead their own lives without having Jesus the authority. So Samuel's being honest. I don't know the Lord. I can't call him the Lord. And the Lord said to Samuel, Behold, I will do a thing in Israel at which both the ears of everyone that heareth it shall tingle. Ooh. In that day, that's a particular expression in the Bible, in that day, means it's going to happen later. I will perform against Eli all things which I have spoken concerning his house and that was chapter 2 verse 27 to 36 I'm going to kill you two boys and your house is going to be put out of the priesthood and that happened first Kings 227 and they're not going to be in the priesthood anymore God signs and seals that through a prophet a man of God verse 27 of chapter 2 and then he puts it to Samuel who's going to take over make an end again I will also make an end he's going to start with the two sons of Eli but it's not going to end for Eli into 1st Kings 227 for I have told him chapter 2 that I will judge his house forever for the iniquity which he knoweth because his sons made themselves vile and, re and he restrained them not it's a parent responsibility it is Eli's responsibility not as a father of those children but as the high priest over the priest now those sons have wives they have their own families 
That's not the father and son relationship no more. It's the high priest over the priest. They were messing with the sacrifices. They were confusing the people of Israel. They were sleeping with the women at the tent, at the door. And Eli, who should have put a stop to it, didn't. And therefore I have sworn unto the house of Eli that the iniquity of Eli's house shall not be purged. Oh, with sacrifice nor offering forever. There's absolutely I am not going to receive. So with that aspect of Eli and his sons, when they die, they go into hell forever. If there's no purging. If there's nothing they can offer. So a high priest or his son with Eli, I don't know, but his son can go into hell. There are people of Abraham who are the chosen seed. They are in hell today. That rich man went into hell and said, Father Abraham, Jewish. And if God would have his own people, if God would have his priest that he called to session, to office, if he would put them into hell, he would have no problem putting a Gentile who will reject Jesus Christ as his Savior, as John the Baptist would say, the wrath of God. So no matter who of Eli's family, that's it. And Samuel laid unto the morning and opened the doors of the house of the Lord. So he's doing servile work. And Samuel feared to show Eli the vision. He's like, I don't want to see Eli. Because I know he's going to say, well, what happened? I don't want to tell him. Then Eli called Samuel and said, Samuel, my son. And he answered, here am I. And he said, what is the thing that the Lord has said unto thee? Now, God already told Samuel Verse 13, for I have told him. <laughs> so it shouldn't really be a bother to Eli because Samuel already knows God spoke to him about this. What is the thing the Lord has said unto thee? I pray thee, hide it not from me. Now watch this. God do so to thee and more also. You mean you just you want to curse Samuel and his family? Because that's what God just did to you. Whatever God told you, if you don't tell me, son, may God do the worst to you. No wonder everybody is, is crashing with you as the high priest, buddy. What a ridiculous statement to a young man. Supposed to be under his care and authority to serve God. He doesn't even know who God is. He doesn't even know who the word of God is. The, th the lights are going out in the temple. His sons are having a, a melee with the, the office of the priesthood. And if you don't tell me what God told you to do, may God do worse to you. You're a fool. If thou hide anything from me for all the things that he said unto thee. And Samuel told him every whit and hid nothing from it. He's faithful. He is faithful. And Eli says, and he said, it is the Lord. Let him do what seemeth him good. There's no repentance. And yet God, verse 14, said he would not receive repentance. Jonah runs into Nineveh. Forty days, God's going to wipe you guys totally out. They got right. They fasted and all that. And God says, okay, I repent. I'm not going to do it. Now, maybe if Eli at least got right with God, maybe God, but he doesn't even repent. Oh, well, God's going to do it. And Samuel grew. And the Lord was with him. And did let none of his words fall to the ground. Now let's look at verse 1 again. And the child Samuel ministered to the Lord before Eli, under Eli. And the word of the Lord was precious in those days. There was no open vision under Eli. Eli has been cursed. Eli has been set back. Samuel now is starting to serve the Lord. He's starting to do right. And now the words of God are showing up that were missing through Eli. 
They're showing up through Samuel. And when the word of God speaks to Samuel, he's keeping it and he's doing it. It's not what Eli was doing. And all Israel from Dan, even to Bathsheba, that's from north to south, knew that Samuel was established to be a prophet of the Lord. So Samuel's a prophet. He's also a judge. He's going to do the priesthood. He's never a king. So all Israel gets the idea. There's something about Samuel now. When they go to that temple, they start talking to everybody. Hey, you know that Samuel, that guy that's of Hannah, that's in the temple? Yeah. He realized God's with him. And Eli, uh, I don't know what that guy's problem. And do you know the wickedness of his sons? And yet, what about Samuel? And the Lord appeared again in Shiloh. That's where the tabernacle is, the temple. For the Lord revealed himself to Samuel in Shiloh by the word of the Lord, which Eli could not do. Samuel, Samuel, Eli, what do you want? I ain't call you. You go back to bed. Samuel, Samuel, Eli, you for sure called me. Go back to bed, will you? Leave me alone. Samuel, Eli, you definitely called me. Oh, maybe it's the Lord talking to him. It took Eli almost forever to realize if somebody's calling this boy, if somebody's talking to this boy, oh, it, it's the Lord. That'd be the last thing he thought. Yeah. And then you would think that uh, Eli would say, Sam, you know what? The Lord's calling. Come here, my boy. Over there, lay down there in the corner and let God speak to the both of us. No, he sends Samuel away. <laughs> Go lay down in your spot. Get out of here, boy. And then the next morning, what did God say? If you don't tell me, I'm going to curse. And God says, listen, Samuel, you love me. You want to do right. God shows up to him by the word of the Lord. And everybody in Israel says there's something about Samuel. Maybe the Lord wouldn't speak to him when he was around the same time. I'm just saying, he was, oh, I know that's true, but you just would, if Eli was right with God, wouldn't you Wouldn't you want to be there too to be talking to God? But, but the prophet had already told Eli he was wrong, so he yeah. already knew the Lord wasn't going to talk to him. Well, so, we're getting away. Uh, chapter 4, Eli's gone. And then we start picking up on the wonderful works that God uses. And Samuel's a wonderful man. Great God. 